First off, my name is Michael Johnston. I'm the president and CEO of Duquesne. Along with me is Dirk Cortman. He's the managing director of KVT. And next to him is Vanessa Marish. Vanessa Marish, she's the KVT sales manager. Those two people are out of Germany with KVT. So we're going to get right into it. What we're really excited to announce today at this press conference is that Duquesne Corporation has acquired KVT, KVT Technologies. And who is KVT Technologies? Basically, this is their facility located in Bielefeld, Germany. And they, you can see here on the map where they're located. They're a little bit south of Hanover and a little bit north of Dusseldorf. That's where the facility is located. It's a German plastic assembly solutions provider. Uh, they were established in 1981. Okay. These are the products that the KVT organization offers. One of the products is electro resistance welding, induction welding, used for brass inserts. One of the other products is heat element welding. Here in the US, we call that hot plate welding. In addition to that, they have hot gas welding, which we're going to talk about a little bit more in, in, in a moment. Infrared welding, so that's infrared light welding of plastic components. In addition to that, we have rotational friction welding, or spin welding, as we call it. Thermal forming, and they also have some ultrasonics. One of the things that's happened and why this is so important is that the industry for plastic components has changed quite a bit. And what customers are demanding is components that are particulate free. They're looking for plastic assemblies that don't have contamination in them. In addition to that, the industry is looking for a better way to join plastic components and get a really nice cosmetic appearance. And lastly, Components are becoming significantly more complicated. The old days of just welding a box together, it doesn't really happen anymore. Components are now very complicated geometries, all kinds of angles and stuff, so that makes the welding process a little bit more difficult. One of the things that's so exciting to, about the KVT Duquesne relationship is this process, and it's called hot gas welding. And KVT patented this process a number of years ago, and what the process does it meets these industry requirements. It handles the concept of a particular free assembly. It, it gives you the ability to have very beautiful cosmetically welded components, and it handles complex geometries. So how does the got hot gas process work? We're going to show you a little video here real quick. Vanessa's going to talk about that. In the hot gas welding video, we will show you we weld this part. The weld this part absolutely particle free and you see it's a very very complex part it's not possible to weld it with another kind of welding technology here in the middle we have the heating element hot nitrogen goes into the heating element will be heated up here and then goes out of these small nozzles directly to the weld bead of the plastic part so we have the eating element in between, then some little tubes, hot nitrogen goes out of the little tubes directly to the weld bead of the plastic part, but without touching the plastic part. We have a gap between the little tubes and the weld bead between one and three millimeters. It always depends on, on the geometry of the part, on the tolerances of the part. And oh, here we have again <laughs> the video, and of the humidity of the, in the part. Yeah. Now it's a heat up phase, so here you can see the gap between the needles and the plastic part. And after heat up, we will join the part. We use nitrogen because, as you know, nitrogen is an inert gas, so we don't damage the material. We have absolutely no oxidation. The pictures in the video you see here are nearly um, the same principle like, you know, the pictures from hot plate welding or infrared welding. So we have sensors in it, we have clamping function in it, and we um, cooled the pictures. The heating element will be heated up <coughs> electrically, so we have heating cartridges in it. And um, because of the 
nozzle plate technology we can also build very very complex part and if the part has some tolerances we can bend the nozzles to weld the part everywhere the rear lamp at the back for example it's also welded with hot gas welding so it's also no problem to weld if you have electronic parts inside or if you have a wolf or something like this near to the weld bead. It's absolutely possible to weld. We have here also a hot gas welded sample part. You can take a look maybe around if you like. We have made tests. You have absolutely no mechanical stress on the weld bead because yeah, we heated up the part without touching it and um, after plastificate the part we will join it, so it's a very, very smooth process and um, absolutely stress-free free for the part. Excellent, thank you, Vanessa. So as she suggested, it's particulate free, uh, welding with nitrogen, uh, no oxidation in the weld seam. Uh, it's, it's a contact-free welding process. Here's a picture uh, where we took a slice of this, of a part that was welded with hot gas, this particular part here. And then we put it under the microscope and we polarized it. And what you can see here is there's actually virtually no stress to the part that's, that was welded using the hot gas process. Here again is another picture. What they've done is we've taken hot air and blown the hot air on the part. This is done when we do a weld picture. So if you compare the hot air to with a part that's just exposed to the nitrogen, you can see there's no contamination or carbon affected on the part. It's a radiant heat process. There's no pollution on the heat element. What that means is with standard hot plate, the parts actually come in contact with the heat platen, and that sometimes creates particulate and pollution that you gotta clean off the plate. There's no mechanical stress in the part, as we showed you with that polarized picture. Uh, Basically, you can weld all types of thermoplastics and, again, complex geometries like we showed you there. And the weld strength is incredibly strong. So what markets would be interested in this? Quite frankly, automotive is, has had a, a significant amount of interest in it, and medical as well. The beauty of the medical concept is it's a clean weld, so there'll be no contamination for components that might be made for the medical industry. So. Customers' need for the hot gas technology has developed worldwide. And KBT organization basically is in Germany up until now. And the support for the hot gas technology has been from that one location. So what we're excited to talk about is the marriage of Duquesne and KBT. Duquesne has manufacturing facilities in over six countries. We have technical service support center in 14 locations. In addition to that, we have authorized representation, representation centers in 40 other locations. Here's a picture of our manufacturing facilities on a world map. We have manufacturing facilities in Mexico and North America. We have a facility in the Czech Republic, China, Japan, India, and now, which we're really excited, our new facility in Germany. So the customer's needs for the hot gas technology is worldwide. Now Duquesne will be able to support that technology everywhere in the world with our facilities to help support the KBT products. So here's a map. And location again, there's the new German facility. Here's Duquesne's current manufacturing facility in the Czech Republic, which will also be supporting KVT with tooling and manufacturing. The other thing that's really excited up till now, Duquesne has not had a huge presence in Germany. And with the marriage of KVT, KVT will be able to offer Duquesne products in Germany now, such as the patented server ultrasonic technology, in addition to that, the vibration welding technology will be supported by a KBT in Germany from this point forward. So, with the marriage of KBT and Duquesne, we believe that Duquesne has the largest breadth of technology. At this point in time, we offer all of these solutions. Now, in addition to the Duquesne, Duquesne current product, the vibration welding, the spin welding, now we have induction welding with KBT, hot gas welding, and the thermal forming. So it's pretty exciting. So basically, we are a total solutions provider. If somebody comes to us with an application that needs to be bonded for plastics, we, we, we definitely have a solution for it. Okay. All right. So 
that's the announcement about the KBT. We're introducing a number of other products. Uh, one of the products is this uh, AIM Ultrasonics Power Supply. And the, the, the acronym AIM stands for Automation in Mind. What we did is we went and we interviewed a bunch of our customers, the electrical engineers, the process engineers that were currently implementing this equipment. And we talked to them and said, you know, what are the things that would be important to you in an ultrasonic power supply? And they came back to us and they told us that ease of integration, um, the size of the unit, uh, communication protocols, they wanted to have the ability to take this power supply and put it in their global applications. In addition, um, lower power consumption. So with all that in mind from interviewing the engineers, basically we came up with the new power supply and we put all that into place. So the generator has a new mechanical layout that makes it very uh, compact. It makes it easy to be put into an electrical cabinet. The way the wires are configured, it reduces the size requirement. In addition to that, it, it, it's a very compact, so it's really the highest power density per cubic inch of an ultrasonic power supply that's available. And it includes all the Ethernet, Modbus standard, all the communication protocols that are available are in it. And, and what's unique about Duquesne is when you invest in a power supply from us that has these protocols, we don't just have the connections. What you get from us is a very detailed document that helps you integrate it into your automated system along with all the PLC programming and the HMI program is on a, on a disk, basically. Okay, so that's the new AIM generator. And to meet the global footprint, it has multi-language capability and use of universal power input. All right, the other thing we're introducing at the show today is this Infinity patented servo technology in this new power, in this new press system. And the Duquesne introduced um, servo ultrasonic weld technology back in 19, I mean in 2009, and we've expanded the product family, and this is our newest addition to the product family. The machine is sitting right over here. When we get done, I'll actually weld some parts and show you how it works. It's, it's pretty impressive. But basically, this is the, best, the latest addition to the product family. It's a very compact design, so you allow it to customers to gang them up in automation. Uh, it comes in multiple frequencies from 50 kilohertz all the way up to 20 kilohertz. And it, it's um, compact, low force micro, it's designed for low force micro precision applications, which we will see after this. All right. The other new product that we're introducing at the show is the IQ Auto Plus ultrasonic generator with um, MPC built-in integrated. In the past, what customers would have to do is invest in a power supply and then a separate box for the multi-point control. So what we've done now is we've integrated into one box and it, it was actually driven by our customers because there more customers are manufacturing what they call like a cassette unit where there'll be an automated machine and then in that automated machine they want to be able to swap out a cassette so by doing this, by having this integrated, it reduces the cabling that they would have to do now that this is the on, on board of the cassette, which makes a lot of sense. So again, it's integrated up to eight points. Uh, all the communication protocols that I spoke about before are available in the new MPC um, Auto Plus generator combination. The other thing that's new this year that we're talking about is the ability to weld by distance. So what customers can do is they can go get an, a, a distance encoder and using the one to 10 volt input, we can use our communication protocols to now control distance on this power supply for the customers. So with distance, you have the ability to well by distance, well by energy, well by time, and, and then and peak power as well. All right. One of the things that's unique about the way we handle the communication protocols is all the, all the calculations are done in our system versus on board of the PLC. And our system operates at a half a millisecond sampling rate, so the process happens significantly faster, so it's gonna give you the highest level of precision for automation. Okay, the other new technology we're introducing at the show is this machine over here. This is our new servo vibration welder with infrared preheat. 
So basically the way that process works is we're gonna introduce some preheat with the IR prior to the vibration. And again, this is an option, an option for less particulate than a standard vibration welder. And after the thing, we'll go all apart and show you that. Okay. Servo-driven lift table, infrared preheat, custom designed quartz bulb emitters. Uh, we've gone with the quartz bulbs. We found those to be significantly more robust than what's being used in the industry today. Uh, we can water cool the emitters. And one thing that's kind of unique about our system is it's basically our standard vibration welder. And when you want to add the IR preheat, it's just an add-on. It's not a different machine. It's the same machine. And basically, when you load the fixtures, the software identifies that it has the IR preheat, so all the controls come at that point. All right. Any questions? Okay. With that, then, I'd like to show you some of the processes, if we could. Let's start with the IR preheat. And Paul's going to weld a part for us over here in this machine, if you want to take a look. So this is our traditional vibration welder. We use vibration to make frictional heat and melt two parts together. Uh, typically in vibration welding, because there's two surfaces coming together cold that we're trying to heat up, there's a risk of uh, particulate being generated and falling into the welded assembly. So what we do now is we introduce infrared heat prior to the weld process to get it to a plastic state so that we don't have particulate come off when we start welding. So actually, would you like to weld the part? Go ahead and hit the button. Yep, just one, there you go. So the heaters extend. We have it shielded because it's such a bright source. We, the heaters fire up and you can see it supports slightly molten, then the heaters retract. We've slowed the process down so you can see it better. And then the servo lift table brings it up and we track the melt distance as we weld the parts together. You can take your finger off, I'm sorry. <laughs> as soon as it starts, you can remove your finger. If you would like to pass it around. We can also integrate a, uh, a thermal imaging system from emitted energy into any one of our welding processes to give you live true temperature feedback and track the amount of heat produced by the weld to ensure that you're getting a consistent weld process. Thank you. Okay, so now we're gonna go look at the new Infinity ultrasonic welder, it's the latest addition to the servo product line. And this is the newest product to the family and this is the Infinity welder. And what's really unique about this welder is the, it's the capability of welding very, very small components. If you look at the part, this actually is the part. I'm gonna head in here and put it in your hand there. So it's welding, it's a micro precision molded part and we're gonna weld two halves of that together. <laughs> Basically, that's the process. We're able to deliver two pounds of force accurately on the product. Uh, you would not be able to do that with a pneumatic welder. Uh, servo gives you the ability to do that.